unless you accept spiritual help. And I'm like, time out. It's like 2013. There's got to be a different way of going about this. Like, don't you have something in the back you can give me? Like, you're telling me there's a spiritual solution for this? Like, God's going to fix this problem? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't, I wasn't going to talk about God. I didn't even like saying the word God. I'm not having that discussion with you. I'm a grown ass man. Yeah. Don't talk to me about this. You're not my parents. That was the problem at the end of the day, really. Oh, yeah. Was that attitude and yeah. that right there. That Being little playlist. Being so close minded. <laughs> Welcome, beautiful people, and thank you for joining us on Till the Wheels Fall Off, a podcast by Two Folk Couple. I'm Matt. And I'm Paige. And we're here to inspire others, to bring you guys into our lives and tell you a little bit about our journey. Over 20 years together, we've learned a few things. We're going to work toward being the best version of yourself possible. We're going to dig into building a positive mindset, discuss mental health, addiction recovery, improving fitness, building businesses, and insight into what it takes to navigate life today. Welcome back. Welcome back. Be a little bit more like a meditated voice or something. Welcome back to another episode of Till the Wheels Fall Off. This uh, is our spirituality episode. Okay. <laughs> you like no, that? No, no, go okay. back. Go back to Matt. <laughs> All right. So we've been putting off this episode for a very long time. Spirituality is a topic that gets under people's skin. Some people don't even want to go there. Some people are like, why are you recording this? Some people are like, you're wrong. That's blasphemy. I'm unsubscribing from your shit and I'll never want to hear this stuff again. So let's start with a disclaimer. We both think that there is absolute beauty and splendor and wonder in all spiritual and religious paths to God. Yes. No matter what you do, I think it is amazing and I respect the absolute hell out of it. Yep. You would say the same, Absolutely. Right? Just because our path doesn't look like a traditional path, I don't want people to think that we think ill of other paths. Like right. You can think what you want of us. I don't care about that. That's fine. Right. I just right. don't want you to think that I disrespect you. Right. Because I don't. I think it's no. beautiful if you practice Christianity. We're all looking track, for yeah. the same exactly. thing. If you practice Islam, it's beautiful. Hindu, beautiful. Whatever. Whatever it is that you practice, I think anytime people are working on themselves and getting closer to a higher being, it, there's, there's beauty in that. So that's it. Yes. Yes. So, now to our path. So spirituality <laughs> and religion differ. Uh, it was... Described to me that religion is for people that are afraid to go to hell and spirituality is for people who have already been there. I think a different way to put that would be to say that spirituality is more individual. Yeah. It's like belief in my experience and it's very broad. Mm -hmm. Whereas religion is more communal and it starts with the belief in someone else's experience. Yes. Like reading through religious texts. Yeah. And it's very specific and like it's rituals and everything else. So they're the same but different. Same, but different. Yeah. Okay. So when we're discussing spirituality, let me just put you on the spot. Why did you turn to spirituality for development? Me? Yeah. You. Because I was miserable. In and what way? Okay. Well, because I had anxiety that was really bad. And then I saw you become sober and happy and content with being spiritual and that's what helped you so i was like hmm, maybe there's something to this but do we want to tell people how we got to where we are well i got, that's what i was asking <laughs> for there was something to this so that's how i came to it as well yeah thinking back even when i was a kid i was always envious and like sort of jealous of all the kids that had like a a life at church and a life with God. And they discussed that stuff because they always seemed so freaking happy. Yeah. And I was miserable. And so I saw it from them and it's like, maybe there's something to that spirituality stuff. Maybe there could be. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but there was something about it. And so as we were looking at this episode and talking about it, I read a bunch of studies about spirituality and happiness and you can look at it and it is like the evidence is out there. People who have a spiritual component, of their life are happier. Period. Yeah. They're happier. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said about that. So you saw it from me. I saw it from someone else. But it's like, hey, that worked. Let me try that. And that's all it takes to make a start. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So our background, um, how would you describe our background? Okay. So we both uh, grew up in Christian homes, but we didn't go to church regularly. 
Easter. You, yeah, maybe Easter every few years. Uh, or I, I would drag to like the new uh, the Christmas Eve service sometimes. Yeah, and you went to a Christian uh, summer camp. Summer camp. Um, I would go to like vacation Bible school with friends. I got shamed <laughs> for not being baptized at one. <laughs> Did you know that? No. It was very awkward for me. Um, but we grew up in a very, I mean, believing in Christianity and yeah, then, like Christian values in our home. For right. Sure. Yeah. We had the values. And then once we became teenagers, uh, things changed a little bit. Hell yeah. It's time to rebel. Yeah. We but, went the opposite what, direction. Yeah. That's what we did. We would look for that. Like the people who seemed to have it together and just tell them they were wrong. Yeah. That's how it worked for a long time. It's yeah. like pff, stupid. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I was kind of agnostic, and I didn't know what to think. What was agnostic? It's being uneducated about it. Yeah, agnostic is uh, it's the Latin root of the word agnostic means without knowledge. Yeah. Just simply without knowledge. It just means you don't know. Yeah, you were more agnostic for a long time, and I became atheist at one point. Yeah, an angry atheist. No, I wasn't an angry atheist. You were <laughs> angry. I was okay and content with being an atheist until my anxiety got worse, and I was like, all right, something ain't right. I but was you the, uh, were... I, I mean, was the drink too much guy. Let's have an argument, dude. That's, I was that atheist. I was the annoying one. No, no I mean, one I would argue. I think I argued with some people. Yeah, but what were we really arguing about? You know? Like, yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Uh, look, knowing what I know now, like, I want to slap my prior self because, like, really, dude? You're arguing with someone who's happy and they've got their life together and their shit together and you're over here swallowing 50 pills a day and you know something about happiness? Yeah. What did I know? Yeah. So... The need for spirituality comes to us in different forms, different ways. But I think at the end of the day, we seek it when we're ready for it. And it's really hard to be told that you're ready for it. You have to sort of believe it in yourself. And I think for, for me, I hit rock bottom drugs and alcohol. You hit rock bottom from like panic anxiety attacks. and panic attacks and just not being able to just get through basic day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. But we, we, we started looking when life became too much. Yeah. And it was like, there's got to be something more to this. And you started to come across people that were happy and they had ideas about what the stuff looked like. And Well, you were told also when you went to re yeah, re rehab. So I went to treatment. I knew nothing about recovery. I knew nothing about treatment centers. I just knew that like celebrities checked into these places and they made like really good albums after and they made really good like movies after. And they seem to have their shit together after 30 days of treatment. So I was like, that's what I'll do. I'll go to treatment. Yeah. I'll get fixed. And when I went there, I was fully expecting them to have like some magic pill or some shot to give me mm -hmm. that was going to fix me. Like, yeah. here you go. You're better now. Pat me on my head and send me on my way. But what they told me was that you're fucked. Yeah. You're fucked unless you accept spiritual help. And I'm like, time out. It's like 2013. There's got to be a different way of going about this. Like, don't you have something in the back you can give me? Like, you're telling me there's a spiritual solution for this? Like, God's going to fix this problem? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't, I wasn't going to talk about God and like saying the word God. I'm not having that discussion with you. I'm a grown ass man. Yeah. Don't talk to me about this. You're not my parents. That was the problem at the end of the day, really. Oh, yeah. Was that attitude and yeah. that right there. That Being little playlist. So close minded. <laughs> Yeah, so they, they told me, okay, well, here are your options, Mr. Robinson. You can die before you're 35, or you can accept spiritual a spiritual solution, and maybe there's a chance. And then uh, a guy that ended up working me through the program said something to the effect of, um, what's the worst thing that could happen? At, if it doesn't work, I'll refund your misery. Yeah. And I was like, well, fuck, if you put it that way. Okay. I was a, I'm, I'm a businessman, right? So my risk is very low. My reward is very high. That's a good investment. Right. I'll take it. I'll take one. So, yeah, I started walking that path and it worked for me. Uh, but anyway, the need for it. We seek spirituality. We seek deeper meaning. And what it really is, is, a, so I had a friend of mine in the program. Um, he said that uh, spirituality is the inner path of oneself and the deepest meanings and values by which one lives. And when I hear that, it sounded like gibberish to my prior self, but what I hear now is I actually think twice about things. I'm not a slave to my first thought and I'm present in every moment. Mm -hmm. How would you describe what is spirituality to you? For me, it's yeah. being present in the Just now. Truly that being present. Yes. Truly present and being like with nature and the universe. It's just something that I can't explain. 
It's just being present. That's what I think is cool about spirituality is that it's so broad. Yeah. And that we can both come to the same place. We arrive at the same place. We just took different paths. Yeah. Like imagine a mountain and I, I rode a donkey up the front side of it and you took like <laughs> a horse image. down the back, you know, <laughs> but we got to the top just the same. Yeah. Just different paths different of seeing paths. it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of common themes in it. And you can even have, I've had conversations with very religious people and we have common themes in ours too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's beauty in all paths, right? Go back to that. Right. Uh, so why the need for spirituality? Why do we need a design for living? For me, it was because I was broken. And for you, it was because you were broken as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you have to be broken to want to be better. No. My guess is that if you're listening to this podcast, that you care about your personal development. Mm -hmm. You care about bettering yourself. I think spirituality is probably the most underrated form of bettering yourself. Mm -hmm. because people don't know enough about it and it seems sort of daunting and scary, but it's not, it's really not because it's a custom path. You get to make it. It looks however you want it to look. Yes. That was my favorite part about it was that there was no doctrine. There were no rules. There was no one telling me what I could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. It was simply, it was a path. Find God, dude. It was a way. Go find him. Yeah. Go find him. Yeah. And so we are both, God, I don't even know if I want to box myself into anything, but I guess if I had to, if I had to check one box on a test, it would be probably Taoist. Taoist, yeah. A little bit of Buddhist. Yeah. A little bit of Christianity. Yeah. A little bit of something I'm not sure how to define. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> that's it. Right there. So check one of all the boxes. Yeah. Uh, but it it gives, us, it gives us both principles to live by. Uh-huh. So for you, it's staying present. Right. So whenever you think about something going on in your life and you're just out of sorts, mm-hmm. like there's the world's too much today. Okay, Paige, just stay present, right? I literally say in my brain, presence. So you have a mantra. Or I say now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chanting the mantra. Mm -hmm. Now, presence, now, presence. Is that kind of like your yellow brick road thing? It is. It it does the same exact thing. So spirituality is integral for healing. It is almost crucial, I would say, to healing through past trauma and being able to forgive and being able to see that we are all sick. Have mm-hmm. compassion, have empathy. Mm-hmm. Um, there are more studies than I can count about how it lowers stress levels, mm-hmm. how it increases happiness, how it deepens understanding and compassion, how it provides purpose and meaning. And it has an overall positive effect on your health, your happiness, and your relationships. Like, there are no downsides here. No. The only downside is that you might have to do some reading and like yeah. some deeper thought <laughs> right you have to question your thoughts though that's the thing you should be i know a lot of people, that's a scary thing for people you should always sc- question it was very thoughts. scary for me <laughs> the brain's a dangerous place you should never go there alone yeah you should always go there with us with here with two folk couple so. <laughs> <laughs> all right so some examples of what spirituality can look like as we mentioned it is very broad it's huge it's all inclusive never forbidding uh what are what is your spiritual life? Well, I guess just tell people what does our spiritual life look like? Okay, you speak for me. There's a meditation. Yep, and meditation encompasses what? Being present and breathing. Sometimes. And thinking of your thoughts. What are you trying to get out of me? I'm just trying to get you to answer a deeper question. That's all. So we fight a lot behind the <laughs> scenes about how I don't let her talk enough. But then when I talk, I do this. <laughs> and she gets like, mad at me. And like, what are like, you trying to say? I feel like he's trying to get me to say something specific. And then he's, not, he, he's got an agenda. I'm not at all. And I'm if just, you listeners hear this, you probably listen sometimes and know what I'm talking about. Or I maybe I'm just freaking crazy. I don't know. I was just seeing if you did your homework. All right. Meditation isn't just breathing. Okay. I know it's not breathing. Meditation for me. when is, Okay. You're right. If it's for you, I can't no, argue no, no. with you. For, for me, it's, it's practicing being present and coming to a present moment it's practicing releasing your thoughts it's practicing that that time of just being i love it but for you it's just i I just have a different way of arriving there i i do breathe i do i think that when i get the most wonky of all i will shut the door in my office i will get quiet i'll put noise canceling earbuds in put on some very transient music and i will just breathe Mm -hmm. and just Just breathe. Think about nothing other than my breath to get present. But other things get me present as well. Um, Mountain biking, snowboarding, any kind of fitness activity 
where I'm dancing for me. Yeah. Exerting myself dancing. Yeah. Anytime you're doing that, you, you are, you have to be present. Like if you're snowboarding or mountain biking, if you're not present, you will hit a tree. Mm -hmm. You were thinking about nothing other than the balance on the bike and where to turn and what, what, you know, your next move right now, what do I have to do to survive this moment? And it forces you to be present. And when I get done doing those types of activities, I feel so relaxed. Mm -hmm. Just like, wow. But it's not because I was doing, I was mountain biking or I was snowboarding. It's because I was being present. It's the same feeling I get when I meditate. Yes. So meditation comes in a lot of forms. And examining your thoughts, like you mentioned that, like thinking about your thoughts and not being a slave to your first thought. And you're not judging your thoughts. Don't label them. Yeah. And don't judge yourself whenever the thoughts keep reappearing too, because a lot of people will quit meditation because the thought keeps appearing and they're like, Oh, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this. I suck at this. No, the point, that's the point. It's called a practice. Uh huh. Something we do before dinner. Uh, (laughs) so we've got, what? What are you laughing Nothing. about? Nothing. I love you. Keep going. What are you laughing about? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're just going to pick fun here. It's late, y'all. All right. Uh, it's hot in here. Okay. Let's talk about the bowl. We've got a, um, a Tibetan singing bowl. And I'll show this to the camera. It's this little bowl and this cute little pillow. And it's, I don't know, pewter or brass maybe. I don't know what this is I made out of. Know. But it's got like a little wooden mallet. And so... It puts off a sound, like this nice ringing sound, and you focus in on the sound and thinking about nothing other than the sound, and then you start to have thoughts of gratitude, what you're grateful for. So it's before dinner as a family, we hit this bowl, and it sounds like this, and it just rings and rings and rings, and it that thing will ring forever Yes, you hit it hard enough. Yeah. And you just sit there, breathe deeply. We and breathe. Think and about what you're grateful, grateful for. And then we mm-hmm. share sometimes about, you know, what are some of the things that you're grateful for? For us, that's a spiritual practice. Um, we do pray, probably different than a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, maybe not a lot of people, but we yeah, do. I don't know. I don't ask for stuff. I like, just know how I pray. To, to me, to us, God's not a genie in the sky that's up there just waiting on my wishes like Aladdin. Right. It is a truly a relationship where I ask for acceptance and knowledge of his will yes and and then the power to carry it out and thanking yeah you know for any showing gratitude for everything everything. the good bad the ugly all of it it. Mm -hmm. um service to others is important as well Uh, that gets me out of myself yeah so for you i know that sharing your story and about overcoming panic disorder and anxiety get you out of yourself as you work with others. And yes. I do the same thing in addiction. And mm-hmm. this is what we do here on the podcast as part of our spiritual journey. Yeah, for Whether sure. Whether or not people realize it, it is kind of it part is. of it. Um, some people attend churches, mosques, temples. Um, yoga is another great way to get spiritual. Um, journaling and writing are amazing ways to really get to the root causes of things. Mm-hmm. As you're working through some stuff, like in our triggers episode, if something triggers you, journal it and work your way through it Mm -hmm. and you will be present in the moment and you will find something out about yourself that you would not have otherwise done. Think about that in everything that you just listed. What is the common denominator? Being present, being present, being present in every one of them, every one of them. So spirituality is seeking meaningful connection with something bigger than yourself. Like you can call it whatever you want. Like I shoot air quotes and I call it God because God's a one syllable word and everyone kind of knows what you're talking about when you say it. But that doesn't even come close to putting into words what I experience when I'm spiritual. Yes. I just say God. Right. It's convenient. But say it's God, like not higher power, like spirit energy, of the universe. Energy. There's all many different things. But to me, there is no, there's no word. Yeah. And, and recognizing that what connects you to that higher power is also what connects you to others, mm-hmm. which is why the Tao made so much sense for us. Sense for us. So uh-huh. like, I guess we had to check a box. It'd be like Taoists. Yeah. Um, and the Tao is God. What is the Tao? Like it's it's the unknown. It's the unknowable. You can't define it. Right. It's, it means it's the path it or the, the way. It means the way. It translates roughly to the way. Yes. Uh, I would vaguely describe it as the flow of energy that connects us all. And we have a choice to let go and flow with the energy or choose to fight it and go against it. And that's usually where discontentedness and anger and aggression and sadness come from, Mm -hmm. Uh, but living in the way, living with the path. And we all sort of know what that means. 
just read change your thoughts change your life he'll explain it better than i ever could <laughs> but yeah it's great it's amazing um so we've got a handful of books that have really changed our lives yeah when it comes to spirituality yeah so like you just said change your thoughts change your life is by dr wayne dyer we hadn't talked about this yet i think you got confused oh we haven't no tell us about that so this is matt had a cd that you showed me yeah it was given me to by given to me by a friend of mine i was speaking at a treatment center yeah 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 about the topic of spirituality and he was he approached me afterward and he was like, hey, have you ever heard of the Tao? I'm like, what? I don't even know what that's. What did you just say to me? I had no clue what he was talking about. He said, like, just listen to the CD and just let me know what you think. And like on the way home, I was in tears just listening to this thing and thinking, holy crap. Like I've had these feelings my whole life mm-hmm. and someone actually put them into words. I didn't know mm-hmm. that there was like. Like oh, this was oh, a thing. This was a thing? Like we thought it was your own something that you only felt. Yeah, it's crazy right? to find out like yeah. someone else carries the same beliefs. It was amazing. Yeah. So then I, I shared it with you. Yeah, and I felt the same way. I was like jaw dropped eyes open like holy crap this is something that I have been seeking but didn't know that it was out there and what it reminded me of was like being a little kid sitting in a field staring at a tree and just being present and just looking at it it was just it's this this feeling of being connected connected to everything around you but you can't really explain it it's something that and they, they get into that too. Yeah. Like it's very difficult to explain. It's a feeling in the truest sense. Yeah. It's so this feeling. book, it's 81 verses. Yeah. So it was rich. So the Tao is essentially, it's a philosophy, I would say. Uh, Lao Tzu came up with this about, was it 2,400 years ago or something like that? I don't um, know. It says 500 years before the birth of Jesus. So it predates Christianity by about 500 years. Uh-huh. Um, and it's 81 verses and some of them are sort of abstract and they're kind of hard to understand. Like if you were reading these things, you'd be like, I don't even know how to apply that in like context. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. But Dr. Dyer does a very good job of taking these and applying them into modern day terms. Like this is what I think Lao Tzu was getting at with this verse. So it's 81 verses and they're pretty short. I think you read these things every day, right? Yeah. 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 So I reflect and I read and I do what it tells me to do at the end. Um, and it takes about 10 minutes a day. Yeah. 10 minutes a day to go through one of these things. And like, you will often find that they are very applicable to whatever's happening in your life. So it you really it, makes you change your thoughts. It's incredible. Yeah. And if you change your thoughts, you will change, change your, life. your life. So, and spirituality is very much that for us. It's exploring the thoughts, where they come from. And then understanding that we're not slaves to our first thought and that upon further examination, we'll see that we have a choice in the matter. And that in itself is spirituality in mm-hmm. a lot of ways to me. Yeah. Um, another book that we've read, uh, I've read, you haven't you read, read Ruthless Trust. Have no, you? I think I started it and then I, I don't remember. Uh, Ruthless Trust is a book by Brendan Manning and it's a book based on, it's, it's a Christian book. It's a, Brendan Manning was a former Benedictine monk and he was actually an alcoholic which is why I think it was recommended to me and it resonated with me so deeply, but it is the most beautiful story of faith and belief that I've ever read in my life. I mean, I was on the stair climber, literally in tears reading this thing. It's just so incredible. Uh, his relationship with God and, and what faith looks like to him and having ruthless trust, just complete ruthless trust. It's beautiful. Check it out. Brendan Manning, ruthless trust. How do you remember authors? I just you didn't even write that down no I just like know it I guess (laughs) I don't know (laughs) what a random question yeah what a random question to ask me well I don't I'm not good with that I'm just wondering (laughs) um the alchemist did you ever read the alchemist I started to read the alchemist you didn't finish the alchemist Uh uh-uh oh my god I know the the alchemist is it's an amazing story a spiritual journey uh I think a lot of people have read it. it's a bestseller it's been around forever yeah but about discovering your personal legend basically what your higher purpose is in life and like not giving up on that thing and just really, really seeking that no matter what. For me, this came at a time in my life when I was at that crossroads. I had no idea what the alchemist was about. I was like, let me just pick a book that I can listen to in three or four hours. Yeah. And I listened to it and like freaking hit the spot. I mean, I was in that place. I needed to hear these words and it really changed my life. Um, 
it's why we're here today on a podcast, to be honest with you, was I credit a lot of that to what I learned that day from yeah, the Alchemist. For sure. Like, this is my personal legend. This is your personal legend. Yeah. This is what we were supposed to be doing. That's amazing. What's next? Um, okay, so another book that I started with and I would recommend for anybody who's struggling with any type of spirituality um, is The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. I just finished it, reading it for the second time, and every time I was just reading I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so true. This is awesome. It really just helps you to become present and what that means in the spiritual aspect. She's told me it's amazing and I have to read this. She tells me like every day, you have to read this book. I know. And he's you're like, I'm reading get, something else. You're starting else. to get like angry with me no, about it. No, I'm not getting it. angry. I just think that he should have read it. <laughs> I will. Sheesh. All right. The next one on the list is Counterfeit Gods. And this was a book I read in early recovery. It was given to me by my sponsor, actually. He, um, he's like, yeah, check this one out. And it's essentially about how we have a spiritual hole in our chest that we will try to throw all kinds of stuff in. We'll try to throw money in it. We'll throw prestige in it. We'll throw drugs in it. We'll throw, you name it, in this hole and nothing fits. And it's about how we seek everything except for spirituality. And it's a really, really interesting look. And it was like looking in the mirror. Yeah. It was looking in the mirror. And it was like, oh man, I need to, really needed to read that one. But it's an amazing book about... Uh, the search for spirituality, but it, I think I believe that one was also Christian based, which is like like we said, like we, yeah. s- we still take bits and bobs from all different types of religions. Did you say bits and bobs? Bits and bobs. We're going oh to God, England so soon, cute. so I have to get I have to get my you know, vernacular <laughs> down. Uh, the last one on our list, uh, Refuge Recovery, and so this is one that just recently finished, and it is incredible. So AA was uh, the way that I got sober. I got sober in AA, but I have been sober about 10 years and I've really started to look at what are the other ways that people have found sobriety and this is a Buddhist path to sobriety and it is freaking amazing Buddhism is amazing it is beautiful I love every bit of it um yeah I'm gonna take off with some of this stuff it's really really good so refuge recovery so those books are some if you're unsure of where to start in this spiritual journey why we seem so happy check in these books yeah we'll put them in the show notes check in these books and you and you'll get some of it. But I think this is all to say this entire episode spirituality is that we're very, very content. We're very content people. We're happy people. Mm -hmm. And I think to not discuss our spiritual life would be to sell people short. I agree. This is why we're happy at the end of the day. Really? A lot of the things that we teach or that we not teach, but the things that we share, it's all boils down to this. Yeah. Like there's a piece of this fitness, like the recovery stuff, um, the mental fortitude and the things, the life lessons that we've learned and the adversity we've gone through. Spirituality has been at the root of every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. And we haven't really discussed it because it's so such a topic that people get so upset about. Like yeah. Very, a lot of feelings involved and emotions and like, when we started this podcast, beliefs. we said we wouldn't, we weren't, we gonna, weren't going, down, we weren't that road, going down this road, but you know what? We, we kind are. of decided that we're pretty confident and we're happy and our paths could change. Yeah, at any time too. I'm glad you brought that up. Like that's, we've always maintained that like we could end up members of a church one day. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. I just know that I'm addicted to growing spiritually. Mm-hmm. So wherever that takes me, it takes me. Yeah. I'm either going to end up like in Nepal in some temple somewhere with a shaved head. Yeah. Or maybe in the church down the road from you. I don't know yet. Yeah. But, but I want to be open to everything. And I want to share that with our children as well. I want them to be open to as much as possible. Yeah. We give them the freedom to explore what this means to them. So whatever it means to you, you want me to take you to church? Fine. Like we've done that. Yeah. I've had that conversation with them. Um, we also, you know, we have the Tibetan singing bowl before dinner too. Like they've got a very interesting spiritual life already. Yes, they do. But what, something they do know is that spirituality is critical to your development. It's critical to your happiness. It's critical to healing through trauma, dealing with stress as you get older, understanding and compassion of others and empathy and finding purpose in life, which is what we really want at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I think that about covers it. Yeah. If anyone's got any questions about this, I would love you to slide in our DMs yes. and ask away. Yeah. If this resonated with you, if it didn't, if you're wondering what the hell are they talking about, or if you'd like to know more about some of the stuff that we've experienced, we'd be more than happy to answer some of those questions. Uh, you will be able to find clips of this, actually no, the full episode on our YouTube channel. I believe it is till the wheels fall off Tufo underscore couple. I believe, uh, if you can't find it with what I just gave you, you can always go to the description of this episode and there will be a link in there for you. 
I would just do that <laughs> rather than just spend a wild goose chase on YouTube. There's links everywhere. We've got it out there. Uh, we're on Instagram at Tufo underscore couple. We are on TikTok at Tufo underscore couple. We are on Facebook at Tufo couple uh-huh. and on the web at www.tufocouple.com. That is us. Did I get all of them? I think so. And there's still some new ones to come too. Y'all don't even know about. Yep. Some new stuff. We got some dirt on. Ooh. We're gonna hop on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we've got. I hope this resonates. I hope this hit. I hope this landed. I hope this encouraged you to be better today than you were yesterday and to be better tomorrow than you were today. Boom. Uh, until next time, I am Matt. I'm Paige. And we will see you. Bye.